What are sins? Sins are thoughts, words, and deeds against the divine law. What is the divine law? It isn't an incredibly thick book with a gigantically long list of legal provisions, but rather, as Jesus says, the law consists in the love of God and love of our neighbor. If someone truly loves God and his neighbor, he fulfills the law. A sin, then, is an action that is against the love of God or the love of our neighbor. Now, there are sins that are completely against the love of God or neighbor and therefore destroy it. And then there are sins that only wound that love. In this way, we can differentiate between grave sins and lesser or venial sins. Grave sins are simply contrary to the love of God and neighbor. They completely attack that love. Idolatry, not keeping Sunday holy, murder, adultery, or theft are just a few examples of these. Whoever does these things knowingly and with free will commits what is called a grave or serious sin. Grave sins destroy the bond of love that unites us to God. We lose sanctifying grace by which we share in the divine life. And so, the loss of grace also means the loss of our supernatural life. That is why grave sins are also called mortal sins. Venial sins, like all sins, show a certain lack of putting things in the right order. They might be a little too much or a little too little in matters that aren't so serious. There might be misdirection, but they are not directed against the love of God or neighbor. What would be an example illustrating the difference? Well, lying is clearly and always a sin. And this sin would be grave if I deceive someone in a very important matter or cause him damage. For example, if I sell someone a great house for a lot of money, though I'm well aware that in reality it's a dump, that's aimed directly against the love of neighbor. If, on the other hand, without the intention to hurt someone, I tell another person that I like his cello playing, even though I don't like cellos, then this would normally be considered a venial sin. Venial sins, then, are less serious because they don't destroy the love of God and neighbor. But all the same, that does not make them good. They are still sins. They need to be avoided just like all other sins, even more so because of the fact that frequent venial sins more quickly lead us to fall into mortal sin. If, for example, I'm frequently creative with the truth in minor matters, then I will form a habit and I will soon find myself in a situation where I begin to lie in more important matters. So, there you have grave and venial sins. To conclude this episode, we can try to illustrate the effects these different sins have on us. This burning candle represents the light of grace illuminating our soul. It lets us see the path to God so that we can reach our goal safely. This is what it actually should look like in all of us all the time. Through venial sins, the flame begins to flicker. We can still see things, but a flickering flame doesn't shine as brightly anymore. And it's difficult to see everything clearly in such a light. Anyone who has tried to read something in the light of a flickering candle knows what I mean. Through mortal sin, the light goes out completely. We are in the dark and are no longer able to progress towards God until light is restored to us. Or here's the thing once again using a different example. Living the life of grace means eating healthy. You grow and thrive. Venial sins are like undigestible food or too much of something, both of which will give you a stomach ache. Grave sins, on the other hand, are like poison. The end. Game over. While with venial sins you can set matters right by acting rightly, with grave sins, you need help from outside. And this help comes to us from God in the form of the sacrament of reconciliation, or confession. In confession, to stick with the examples, we are resuscitated, or the light of grace is rekindled.